What's up? Uh, Nick here with Gator Gamers, and today continuing Banjo Kazooie, and I've got a special guest, uh, co-commentator, Kevin. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name's Kevin, or Golden Tales Geek, as I'm known on YouTube. Uh, my current project is Super Mario RPG for the Super Nintendo, and Nick graciously asked me to co-commentate with him, and I'm like, eh, and I'm like, yeah, sure. It wouldn't be the first time I've I've co-commentated on a Banjo Kazooie run, so. Yeah, I definitely need to record this again, even though I think, yeah, as of this recording session, I still have either one or two episodes that still aren't public, which I really need to get on that. Yeah, well, I, I, well I'm on, like, part, f I think as of now, like, in terms of uploading, I uh, I uploaded, like, part four of Mario RPG yesterday, and I've recorded up to part 21. I pretty much record. I just went nuts recording a lot in advance, so. Yep, yep. Uh... So, so yeah. So I uh, and I upload like every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I have like seven weeks worth of material to upload. So I'm so I can afford to wait a bit before I record anymore. Although I might start recording some more, like maybe tomorrow or something. We'll see. So I heard Mario RPG was like a really, really good game. Can you address oh, it's, this? Oh, oh, big time. I mean, I, as, in terms of the Mario RPGs in general, I consider it like the most underrated because it's the only one that doesn't have its own series. I mean, there's like been like four Paper Mario games and now four Mario and Luigi games. I haven't played Dream Team yet, but I really want to. Um, I have a 3DS, but still. From what I heard, that game was really good. Uh, my, oh, oh yeah. My younger, Martin, my younger brother sorry. got a demo of it, and I think I played mm -hmm. a little bit of it. It was really interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I, I I got the demo from the eShop myself, and I was just like, oh god, I need this game. Thankfully, it's on my Amazon wish list, so you know, Ooh. if my any of my family wants to get it for me or if one of my friends, they can get it for me. No. Ooh, Amazon. Okay. Uh, before I actually start going crazy, getting all the Grimtil until Granny Slayer uh, stuff, I need to actually start on Mad Must Mansion. Yay! My, yeah, I, the last time I co-commentated on a uh, on Banjo Kazooie was my friend Levy the Amish Man, the Amish Man, that uh, his Let's Play, it, and uh, he had a, several friends pick out what their favorite part of the game was, to, and he'd have them co-commentate during that part. And the part I picked was Click Clock Wood. Although Mad Monster Mansion is my second favorite area in the game, so. So you picked a good time for me to co-commentate, I suppose. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh... <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not too familiar with this part of the game. I mean, I've gotten... Uh, I've yeah, gotten... I don't really remember it all that well either. That's the problem. But I'll try to help out as best I can. Well, if I can figure it's out... with Angel, what change deck? Imagine you on Grunty's back. <laughs> Sorry. I love Grunty's rhyming. It's so funny. Uh, and it just builds her up for the final boss fight, which I can't freaking beat. Ah. Oh yeah, I know. It, it can be really tough if you don't know what you're doing. Like, <clears throat> um, I was playing this before I started even recording Let's Play, you know, to make sure that I could do it, because I've always wanted to do a banjo Let's Play. Because... Oh yeah, I, I totally get that. I always like to do a little practice run before I'm recording something, I record something, although Although I do admit that, dare I say it, I was kind of playing Mario RPG over the course of, like, a few months, like, just replaying it off the cuff, and, and it wasn't until I finally beat it that, that I decided, you know what, I'm going to LP this. <laughs> and I just, and I considered what I, my little month, my, my, just playing it over the course of that month to be my quote-unquote practice run. So, you know, it's kind of worked out pretty well, I think. <laughs> And with uh, most RPGs, you don't really need uh, too much practice with, other than like certain puzzle solving stuff. So, oh yeah, I mean, I know. over a couple months, you know, that is I mean, definitely yeah. good practice run. Yeah, I mean, granted, this is like my first time LPing an RPG, so I figured I'd start with something like that. Although my first, I, I was originally going to like have Chrono Trigger be my first RPG LP because I love Chrono Trigger. It's like it was the first RPG I ever played, and plus, I it's just one of those games is really near and dear to my heart, but I I still don't feel confident enough to LP Chrono Trigger, even though I love it to bits and I know it like the back of my hand. 
I just, I figured, you know, maybe I'll save that for when I have a lot of free time, you know, because I'm probably going to have a lot of, I'm going to probably have a lot of parts, go, uh, like, on that LP, so. Interesting. I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Mario RPG turns out to be my longest LP so far, because my longest LP was my first one, and that's Wario Land 2 at 28 parts, so. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. And, uh, and Link's Awakening was like at a close, which was my third project, came in a close second at 27. So, so, and my shortest LP, which is the one I'm dare I say it is the most proud of, ironically, is um, Monkey Island, Loom, which, is a, which was a point oh, and click adventure game. Hmm? Oh, Loom, I thought, uh, I thought you were about to start talking about uh, Secrets of Monkey Island. Not that. Oh, no, no, that's like 13 parts counting the bonus episode. But uh, but uh, I'm talking about Loom, which turned out to be six parts because I just it's a short game, but I just decided to record it over the course of an entire afternoon. It was it was kind of my way of kind of cleansing the palate, as it were, in terms of LPing because uh, like over the, during like early on in my uh, when I was uploading my sixth my uh, Link's Awakening, my my friend Eric passed away, and so it was just really difficult uh, and, and and it was all after and even though I took two weeks off from uploading anything and recording anything it, after those two weeks I was still kind of mustering to find motivation to record more of Link's Awakening so I was really struggling through to get through the rest of that game mm -hmm. and so basically I decided to record a shorter game over the course of an entire afternoon just to kind of um, just to kind of just it almost as a way to purge my demons, as it were, and Loom was kind of the perfect game for that, in my opinion, because it's such a it's such a very rich game and has a really fantastic world building thing for its time because it came out in 1990. So okay. Well, got the door to Mad Mountain Mansion open. Heading Yay. there now, and we, oh. we have like eight minutes left in the episode. That's fine. Uh, we'll just record all. We'll just record. Keep on recording as we go, I suppose. But <clears throat> although the way I do co commentary is just I just kind of like if uh, when I'm in a certain area and a, a friend of mine wants to co commentate during it, like in the case of Mario RPG, I had a good friend of mine co commentate during um what was it um Booster Tower. So keep an eye out for that, viewers. Um, because it probably won't be. Because I don't think this will be going up around the time Booster Sour is going to be up anytime soon. But still, keep your eyes peeled if you're going to sub to my channel. Anyway, um, and um, I just kind of recorded the entirety of the whole thing in one shot and just edited it into two separate parts. So, well, my thing is, is do this and almost do this entire uh, let's play. Uh, every episode has, like, every world has been two episodes. So huh. the fact that I wasted half an episode just going around uh, the layer, point to point, getting to the level, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but, it's a bit upsetting. Yeah, but... It wasn't. It actually, I'll be honest. It, it's kind of similar to my Link's Awakening LP, where for like for like a number of episodes, I managed to get through the dungeons in like one part, and then uh, even though I had co-commentary, and it wasn't until like Eagle's Tower where I had like. I, it got split up into like I think two or three parts. I can't remember which offhand. Uh, yay! Bust that ghost. Ghostbusters. <laughs> do, 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 yeah. Do. Oh. yeah, that's that's like my favorite movie <laughs> ever. I, it's also my go-to uh, Halloween movie. I watch it every Halloween. Oh, cool! And that's coming up yeah. soon too, ain't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Although there's something else coming out this Halloween that I'm tremendously looking forward to. There's uh. This company called Big Finish Productions, they make Doctor Who audio dramas I listen to, and um, they also do other stuff as well. And this Halloween, they're actually releasing a full cast audio drama based off of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Ooh. And they've cast uh, Arthur Darville, who played Rory Williams as um, as Victor Frankenstein. Oh, and, okay, that sounds pretty epic, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, there's a lot of Doctor Who alumni in this cast. There's... Um, there's uh, the actress who played the Doctor's daughter in the episode The Doctor's Daughter playing um, playing Victor's fiance. There's uh, Jeffrey Beavers who played the Master for a, for a bit in uh, the classic series playing Victor's father. Nicholas Briggs who plays the voices of the Daleks and the Cybermen playing the creature. 
it's a it's a it's a it's a seems like a really great audio adaptation and in fact i was uh, in fact they've also done a, a real a, a, a audio adaptation of uh, treasure island that came out a couple of years ago where tom baker played long john silver Ooh. yeah and when i i actually told my mom about that one because tom baker is like the doctor she likes and uh she was just like oh my god you gotta if you find mp3s for that i want to listen to that because she could totally see um tom baker playing long john silver nice and, and Tom, uh, Tom Baker is actually a really great actor, so I'm really looking forward to it. But, I mean, although he's one of the few actors I've, uh, I think he's like probably the only actor I've seen who's played the Doctor where I can't tell the difference between them because he's just that good. It's just, or better, it's just, it's just you don't know where Tom Baker ends and where the Doctor begins with when Tom is playing the role. It's just. It's, it's it's really just a real gift, a real gift to watch him. He's just so eccentric in a wonderful way. Do I need to <sighs> start watching Doctor Who now? That's up to you, man. I mean, I real I really realize Doctor Who isn't to everyone's taste, even though it can exist in every kind, of, any kind of genre and any kind of format. But but I mean, I mean, for goodness sake, one of my favorite au Doctor Who audio stories is a story called Invaders from Mars, where uh, with Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor, which is my current Skype picture because I've been in a big Eighth Doctor kick recently. Um, and um, and uh, one of the story, and that story in particular is kind of like done in the style of a 1930s sci-fi radio drama, like the old War of the Worlds um, thing that came out in the 30s with Orson Welles. In fact, that's kind of a plot point in one in this particular story as well. And they even have the cheesy musical stingers of them, but um, bum, 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 you know, whenever the scene changes, <laughs> and it's, it's it, and it kind of just it's a really it's a really great story. And one of my f other favorite things about it is that Simon Pegg is in it, and uh, he plays a New York mob boss. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of audio is that actors you actors like Simon Pegg can play roles that you wouldn't necessarily expect from them. And the best part of it is, his American accent is so good, I didn't even realize that was him at, at, on my first listen. Ooh. Yeah, so, and I'm a big Simon Pig fan, so, 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 yeah, it was just really unreal. And then on subsequent viewings, I realized that was him, so, yeah. I'm a big fan of audio drama in general because it's just really... Really, it's just you, it's like listening to a big story being told with all these different voices, and you know, and just and as you and everything that's being described is like in your imagination. So you can just use your imagination to what the monsters will look like and everything, or or you get a rudimentary idea of how you should picture them. You know, I, 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 it's it's a really interesting storytelling device that's not really used here in the states anymore, but it's still going pretty strongly in um, the UK. So at least they're keeping it alive. So. Yep. Alright, so fun fact, ladies and gents of the viewership. Uh, this pirate right here, he was actually the original villain of Banjo-Kazooie before Banjo-Kazooie was Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, oh yeah, I know that. If you watch any, like, did you know type dealios, uh, oh, yeah. you'll, Those videos. you'll know that uh, Banjo-Kazooie used to be uh, a game called oh, um, uh, well, the running name of it was Project Dream. Yep, that's it. I, I was, I was, that's what I was thinking, but I didn't want to cut you off if I was wrong, so I just... And then, um, he was the <coughs> original... It's, 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 it's toilet. Gurgle. Bear is much too fat to uh, fit uh, the logo's mouth. <laughs> in the bathroom. Funny thing is, actually, something else to look forward to in my uh, in my in my uh, Super Mario RPG LP. And in one episode, in the middle of a boss fight, appropriately enough with some kind of gas cloud enemy, I actually kind of accidentally ripped one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and and I had just had lunch like like before I'd started recording, and it, and it just I was like, oh my god. Was it I was, was so, it like audible? Yes. I found that I, I was I was thinking of scrapping the recording, but I decided to see what see if it was audible in the recording first, and then I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna go with it, because the battle went so well, you know. Mm -hmm. I just I just didn't want to lose that lose that fight, so.
I just figured why not. Anyway, I think we're coming up on the time here. Yep, so. we are. As soon as I figure out how to kill this ghost. The, yep. Boom. See, uh, the good thing about Banjo Kazooie on the Xbox Live, well, the good thing about it on the N64 is that you had the C buttons. So, yeah. but on here you have like two extra buttons with the face buttons. But in oh, order yeah. to do the uh, Wonder Wing, you have to like move the C stick, and uh, not the C stick, the uh, right stick, which is really weird. Yeah, yeah that can be a bit cumbersome. Anyway, I think we're a little bit over, but yeah, that's whatever. Fine. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Tune in next time where we'll uh, hear more Kevin and hopefully finish up Mad Monster Mansion. See ya. Bye. <laughs>